Hello and welcome to World Organic News. This is the audio from one of the mini seminars I did on Facebook Live on the World Organic News Facebook page. This is episode four, Pesticides and Herbicides, a question mark. Uh, have a listen, tell me what you think. Uh, email me at podcast at worldorganicnews.com. Welcome to the change to No Dig Gardening Explained, the Change Underground System a series of mini seminars. Today's session four of five, Pesticides and Herbicides, and a huge question mark. Previously, we've covered why no dig, heirloom seeds, and no bare soils and weeds. Tomorrow, we'll bring it all together with the Change Underground System Explained. So, pesticides and herbicides. Let's start with a different perspective. Rather than looking at the bugs or the, uh, the weeds, let's look at the whole system. An ecosystem approach, in fact. So, when are these chemicals used? Originally, as a response to a crisis. So, a crisis of weeds or bug infestation. But think, why would they arise? And if we look at the whole ecosystem, we discover that it is normally as a result of one word, and a word to strike terror, monoculture. And monoculture is the process of growing just one crop in a paddock, and in some cases across huge areas of land. Can you think of one natural ecosystem that's monocultural? We might call something, say, a eucalypt forest or a pine forest, but that's just the dominant species. It's not the only one growing there. Same when we refer to grasslands. There's not just grass growing, and even then not just one species of grass. You've got your herbs and your forbs and all kinds of things growing and your legumes. So the answer is no. There's no such thing as a natural ecosystem that's monocultural. In counterpoint, natural systems are polycultural, obviously, because we're not using mono, lots of different species. They're very complex with interlocking webs of life. Monocultural systems are bread lines for bugs, salad bars for slugs, and empty niches for plants that we call weeds. So they call them... So they call to the pests and the weeds. They ask them to arrive in a lot of ways. If we think of weeds in particular, there's so many unexploited niches in a paddock just full of, say, soybean or corn. Soybeans, corn, potatoes, tomatoes, whatever it is, if there's only the one crop, there are so many unexploited niches that nature will do what it can to fill them because this is the way it works. And so these pests and weeds descend with joy. So rather than fix the ecological problem, which is the monocultural system, monocroppers reach for the spray. Some logic to this, particularly when you factor in debt. So you've got a $50,000 plus for a tractor, so what's another $10,000 for sprays? Particularly when the crop could bring you in $100,000. So instead of making $50,000 plus... Well, even more than that because you'd uh, depreciate the tractor across several years. But instead of making, say, 50000 you only make 40000 you're still 40000 up for the year. Now, this is particularly the case if all this is financed with debt, and debt's the real crippling stranglehold on a lot of farmers. It's why there's so many farmer suicides in India. But that's, so that's a uh, topic for a different seminar. So if we toss in the side effects of spraying, we end up with dead soil because the sprays kill not just the beasts, that we're trying to, the, the bugs we're trying to kill, or the weeds, but also the microbiome in the soil. And that means you need to use more chemical fertiliser because the stuff in the soil is no longer feeding the plants, which leads to more die-off of the soil biota and to the health effects in the humans in the area, things like cancers, you know, that you can, the the current uh, legal actions against Monsanto over glyphosate, and don't worry, dicamba's coming next, and so all the other chemicals that they've sold. So small holders, backyard or even window box growers, 
we can sidestep the debt problem, which means we don't need to grow huge amounts of crops in, of one type in order to hit a market. And we can grow in a polycultural way. You can even grow in a polycultural way on large farms too, but it's got to be a large farm without debt to get started. And we can do all this using the change underground system, which is the topic for tomorrow. Session 5 of 5, the change underground system. Polyculture for the masses.